we will be installing and configuring the Proxmox backup server at primary site. This will help us to have the proper backup of the virtual machines and we can restore it easily from the same site. So let's continue to the installation of Proxmox backup server. You can simply download the Proxmox backup server from the Proxmox site. So you can go to Proxmox site and simply click on download and in download you will see here Proxmox backup server. And once you go to Proxmox backup server, you will see here the Proxmox backup server version 4.0.1. And by the time you are watching this video or you're doing, doing this course, you might see a different version of Proxmox backup server. You'll simply click on download and it will download the ISO image. You will follow the same step that we use to burn the ISO image or to make the bootable uh, disk. So you will be using the bootable disk and the bootable disk is ready right now. In my case, you'll be using Belina Etcher. Follow the same instructions that we have used to install the Proxmox backup server. So we have installed the Proxmox virtual environment. Uh, same way that you have used, you have uh, downloaded the Proxmox virtual environment, the ISO image, then you use the Belina Etcher and the e bootable uh, USB disk. So we have used the same USB disk. You need to make sure that you have a reliable hardware. It should have minimum one network card. And if you want to have redundant network, then two minimum. 10 GBPS is recommended, but of course, one GBPS will be okay. And then you need to have minimum two disks, one for the installation and one for the backup. So recommended disks to use is two disks for the installation and two redundant disks for the backup. So let us install the Proxmox backup server. Step-by-step -step guide will be following the graphical user interface. So it will load the initial setup and it has detected the IP address also automatically. So I'll show you what IP address we are going to use for this. So here is the end user license agreement. You will simply click on agree. And now you can see here there are different disks of course available. You can see here 500 GB is the disk which is available. There is another disk which is 32 GB. Of course I will be installing it on 32 GB and then 500 GB will be used for the backup. Of course, uh, you can have uh, more disks, of course, depending upon the size of your data center. But as this is for this particular tutorial, you have to have minimum two disks for the, uh, if you are using for production environment, I will recommend you to use two disks for the Proxmox backup server installation and minimum two disks for the uh, storage. So we'll be going with the with 32 GB for the installation. I'll click on next. And here you will choose the country. So here, then you will be choosing the, the time zone, click next. And here you have to enter the password and then email for the notifications mainly. So proxmox at syncbricks.com, click next. Here you can see it has detected the IP address automatically and the host name is pbs.syncbricks.com. So I'll be using pbs01 because this is my first backup server. And I'll be having another backup server also at different locations. So that we'll be installing in next video and we'll be configuring that also. So here we will be doing the Proxmox backup server 01, PBS01. And here instead of the IP address 220, I'll be using 210. And 210 will be for the backup server. So that is fine. So we will be moving next. And here it gives me the information about the Proxmox installation. Of course, if you're using multiple disks, I will recommend you to use ZFS and Mirror. Just simply install. So we'll wait for this installation process to complete. And once it is done, I'll come back to you and we'll be accessing the Proxmox backup server from the web user interface. It is now making the bootable disk. You can see here, I'm making system bootable. It will automatically restart. It is already installed. So what I'll do, I will first of all, simply remove the bootable disk from here. It is starting right now. So you can see here PBS. Proxmox backup server is now installed. So you can see 10.11.12.201 and 8007 is the port. So we can access using the root and the password that we set up while we were doing the installation. So our Proxmox backup server is now installed. So you can see here 10.11.12.210, port is 8007. During this video, there might be different IP addresses that I might use depending upon the network configuration. I can keep on changing the IP address. You can change the IP address from the command line user interface also. 
and graphical user interface also. I will show you how to use uh, the command line user interface to change the IP address. It can be for any Proxmox node also. So if I go here to uh, nano, and nano is the command that we use to edit the configuration file. So nano slash etc slash network slash interfaces. So here you can see right now the IP address is 10.11.12.210. You can change it to 220, 230, 101, whatever IP address range is there. It is 12.210, which is fine. So I'll be simply uh, changing it if in case you want to change, exit, or you can simply come here and uh, restart the networking. So we can do uh, system CTL and networking, uh, restart networking, and it will restart the networking and you will be able to then see the new IP address. So I will simply ping 10.11.12.104. So that is fine. So I will simply exit this. And once I exit, I can simply come back to the uh, web user interface. I will be typing 10.11.12.210, which is the IP address of the Proxmox uh, backup server and colon 8007. Of course, it has to be accessed through HTTPS, advanced and proceed. And here I can type the root and the password that I set up. And here I'm, be, I'm able to uh, access using the uh, Linux PAM. So here we'll be accessing it and then once you are logged in, of course, this is our Proxmox backup server. In Proxmox backup server, you have to uh, look at various aspects of this. We have already seen how to install the Proxmox backup server. Now, the way we have installed Proxmox virtual environment, same way we have installed Proxmox backup server. And same way, we have to also update the Proxmox backup server. If I go here to configuration, you can see here, this is the configuration of network. Uh, this is the access control, the user and the two-factor authentication, API permissions and RAM. We'll be using this while we'll be configuring. Here is the remote where you will be able to configure the remote Proxmox backup server and you will be able to synchronize the data from this Proxmox backup server to remote. So remote can be on local, network also and remote can be on a uh, different network or a remote site also. So we'll be configuring at remote site. I'm configuring this for the uh, primary data center. So I will be having another data center where I'll be transferring the backup. It will be a physical different site. So I'll show you that as well. Then of course, accordingly, you can do the traffic control and S3 bucket can also be configured here. You can just simply create the S3 and then you will provide the Endpoint details, your backup can be directly sent to the S3 bucket. That is one of the best ways to uh, store the data on cloud. Otherwise, you can have the remote site also with the Proxmox backup server to synchronize it. Uh, subscriptions, this is extremely important. If you want to have this, if you have the subscription key, you will be uploading, updating the subscription key. You can use your server ID to get the subscription key from the Proxmox backup server. If you are using for the production environment, I will highly recommend you, or if you are using for the enterprise, I will highly recommend you to go for the Proxmox subscription. And if you want to know how to do that, I can provide you the subscription details. Uh, you can contact me, so I will be helping you to get the subscription and get it done. Administration, of course, here you can use the shell command. In administration, you can see the graphs of uh, the dashboard of your server statistics, the services which are running, the updates, and repository, all of that is available in the administration section. We'll be covering that. And then we will be going here to shell. Uh, in shell, we can make various changes. Storage is the number of disks which are available. And then we'll be able to uh, configure these disks for the backup. Tape backup can also be done, but I will not be covering that in this course. Uh, data stores, that will be used for the backups and so on. So let me first of all, uh, show you uh, to update the Proxmox repositories. So if you go here to the administration, in administration, you will see here update. You can simply come here, refresh, and uh, it will get all the latest updates. And these updates will be mainly from the Debian because the Debian is only available here. So you will see here. So these are all the packages which are available. You can, of course, upgrade them. So I'll simply click on upgrade. It will run the same command app get upgrade command and type yes. So it will download all the uh, latest releases of Debian, of course. Right now, the Proxmox repository is enterprise. So we have to go with the no subscription repository. Then you'll be able to get those also. 
file it is upgrading, I can simply go to repositories also. You can see here that the enterprise repository is enabled, but there is no subscription active. So I will be simply disabling this. I'm not having now any Proxmox backup server repository, which means that Proxmox will not be updated. So Debian is the Linux distribution and Proxmox is the virtual environment. So virtual environment will not be upgraded right now or the Proxmox backup server will not be upgraded until we add the no subscription repository. So here is the blog that I have written. Of course, I will be providing the details of this also and I'll be providing you exact command here also. So you can see here no subscription for Proxmox backup server. I have added this. So it will be uh, adding the list into Proxmox sources and that will be added as PBS and uh, the component will be PBS no subscription. So I'll be simply copying this command from here and I'll come back to the Proxmox backup server. Right now, no Proxmox backup server subscription or repository is enabled. And I have disabled this, of course, which was already available. So I will be going back to shell here in the Proxmox backup server. I'll click here, paste that command that I showed you and press enter. App resources list and Proxmox sources. And the component is Proxmox or PBS, no subscription. If I go back again to administration, I can go back here to repositories. You can see here that the no subscription repository is not recommended, but you get the updates of the Proxmox backup server, which is fine. We have added the you know, Proxmox backup server, no subscription repository. I can go back again to shell now. I can simply use the command app get update. So it will update the uh, Proxmox backup server. It will get the uh, repository list. And these are now not only from Debian, it is also from the Proxmox.com, Debian and PBS Trixie. So PBS no subscription is now available. So I will do apt get space dist dash upgrade. So it will upgrade the Proxmox backup server also. It will need additional space. I will type yes. Now you can see 732 MB is required here. So it will take time. So once it is downloaded, I will come back to you. Uh, Proxmox uh, backup server is updated so it is processing so if I just uh, refresh this uh, we should see if there is any it was 4.0.11 so if any new version is there so 4.0.18 so we have updated the Proxmox backup server now so it means now we are ready to configure uh, the Proxmox backup server into our Proxmox virtual environment so let me first of all close all these irrelevant tabs so well, we have just Install the Proxmox backup server. We have updated the Proxmox backup server to the latest release. Now we are going to use the disk which we have added into Proxmox backup server and that disks will be used for the data store. Let's move to the next video now. I will explain you how to use the uh, disk, additional disk into the Proxmox backup server so that you can use that for the backups. Let's continue to next video now.